hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is faith and today guys i'll be checking out ben sapiro as he interviews anti-woke rapper tom mcdonald and you guys i'm so excited to be here if you're here to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and if you are ready i'm ready let's see what this interview is all about all right joining us online is tom mcdonald you've seen his videos you've heard his songs he says what most americans think without fear he doesn't censor himself he has a brand new music video called dirty money it was just released on friday it already has like three million views wow. on youtube tom thanks for joining the show really appreciate it yeah, man. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about, you know, how your music career originally happened, because it's very rare to spot anybody remotely near the music industry who does not simply follow the left wing line on pretty much all the issues. But you very vocally do not. So how'd you get where you are? Um, well, I think the key to everything has been um, I'm just I'm totally independent. I have no ties to the music industry whatsoever. I've sort of created my own little ecosystem outside of the music industry. Mm. Um I produce all of my music. I write all my songs. Oh, my girlfriend great. shoots all my videos. Mm -hmm. We distribute my music independently. Um, there, there is no affiliation with any record label, manager, PR team, marketing, publicist, yeah, distro, nothing. Publicist. So it's just us. Um, and I've been doing it for about 10 years. And, uh, and just, just like you said, man, I'm making music about the things that uh, I think people are afraid to talk about. That's amazing. I mean, the response has been absolutely incredible. You can see it from the number of views on, on all of your music videos. So how do you go about writing a song, uh, both, both musically and then also in terms of the lyrics? Which do you do first? You do the music first, the lyrics first, and where, where are you getting sort of the material from? Um, it's, all, it's always a different process. Uh, since I make all of my own beats, like sometimes I come into the studio with, with no concept, with no direction, and just sort of create freely, and it just comes about naturally wow. um but like you know like a lot of people out there i think we're just sort of bombarded with like information these days whether it's the news or the newspaper or on the internet or on social media it's just like this constant bombardment of headlines and 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 stuff happening in the world so i'm just taking all of this information in and and digesting it as best as i can wow. and um you know sometimes regurgitating it back out into into songs of my thoughts and feelings about what's going on in the world today. So yeah, I think it's pretty hard, like, um, to not feel some type of way about all the craziness sort of taking place these days. So why don't you tell me about sort of the origins of dirty money it just came out on Friday. And as I say, it's racking up millions of views almost immediately. Uh, where did that one come from? Um, I've always just been sort of interested in, um, politics and sort of the inner workings of things. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not like a political scientist. I'm not uh, super well-versed in a lot of the stuff that's going on, but I think where I can connect with people is that I'm just like a regular person and I'm getting all the same information that all the other regular people are. Yeah, um, I'm just fortunate enough to have a platform and have the skill to make music. And um, it's just a great forum for me to sort of like, speak the things that i'm thinking so when i watch the news or i read the paper or i read articles online um i just have a great venue to sort of um just speak my mind so and, and i do that from like a regular person's perspective which is why i think i connect with people like so well so it's and, 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 and dirty sorry go ahead yeah, dirty money. Dirty money is just a just a reflection of like a lot of the things going on right now and i think especially in america um, speaking of money, like financially and economically, I think that we're in a real hard place right now. So, um, I wrote this song six months ago. It just, it, it just happened to be the right time for it now. So let's start, let's talk about kind of how your music career got started. Cause we were, we were talking right before we, we, we got on the line, uh, about, you know, the fact that you used to work construction, you know, so, so how did, how did you get to where you are right now? Like when did you first take up music? What, how did this happen? Well, I was a pro, I was a professional wrestler for many, many years, like the WWE style stuff. And, uh, that sort of chapter of my life came to a close, just like uh, there's a lot of internal politics in wrestling and accumulated, accumulated injuries. So I had to get out of that business. And, um, I'd always been sort of writing poetry and writing rock songs. Didn't have the voice. It wasn't, wasn't a Robert Plant, Joe Cocker, uh, 
vocalist. Um, so, but I still needed an outlet and I had been writing music. So, uh, rap and hip hop just was sort of the, the, the natural, uh, direction for somebody that didn't have a big rock star front man voice. So got into rap and hip hop, made the exact same music as everybody else for many years, probably six or seven years. Every, everything was about cars and clothes and money and girls and partying and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was emulating a lot of like what I was seeing, uh, the biggest artists of the time doing and um, not only emulating it in my music, but emulating it in my real life, which led me down a super destructive path, which sort of culminated with like a little bit of a, um, a bout with alcoholism, which sort of led to a little bit of a mental breakdown. And that took me like nine months to a, close to a year to rehab myself from that. Um, so now I'm completely sober uh, and I, sort of coming out of that dark place uh it gave me an opportunity to sort of examine um what do i care about and what what do i want to make my music and who do i want to talk to with my music and uh, i just sort of made the decision like I, I don't want to make music that's going to damage other people like the music i was listening to damaged me so now i'm here uh sober as a judge uh, making um, what the world has deemed to be super controversial music, but it's just stuff that I truly care about. Yeah. So how'd you get into American politics in the first place? I, you're, you're from Canada, right? You're from our northern neighbor? Yeah. So what got yeah. you into American politics? Well, I think that the whole world is sort of into American politics from childhood. Uh, even like growing up in Canada, like uh, my dad and my grandfather were always like really into politics. So I'd sit around and watch TV with them and listen to them talking. And it's really crazy. Like even back then when I was a kid, they were talking about China and sort of warning me about, Hey man, China's going to be a big deal one day. You need to pay attention to this stuff. And here we are today. And it's just like a little bit of a deja vu. Um, but so you, you kind of absorb a lot of that just coming up in Canada. Uh, American politics are sort of spotlighted glo globally, I think. Um, and then moving to America, uh, like eight or nine years ago now, um, it was a little bit of a little bit of a culture shock. And I think that there's a lot of people here that get so wrapped up in it all the time, and and they're and they're they're in it from from birth. That I think that I had a little bit of a unique perspective because I, I think sometimes it's that old saying: you can't see the forest through the trees. And I think that's where a lot of people are at within the country right now. They're just so surrounded by this stuff and have been for so long um, that it's hard for them to sort of like differentiate and focus on different things. So coming in from an outsider's perspective eight, nine years ago, I kind of got to stand back and look at everything and say, holy cow, this is this is wild. What's like what, what's taking place here? And it's only got crazier over the last nine years. So. Well, I, I was very flattered that uh, Facts Don't Care About Your Feelings does actually show up in one of your, your big songs, Fake Woke. Uh, I, I don't know. Hey man, I've been called the Ben Shapiro of rap many times. Well, I mean, speaking of that, I've been called the Ben Shapiro of rap because um, I, obviously I had my uh, amazing recording of WAP, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the Cardi B hit, which I got to say, my, my version slaps significantly harder than the Cardi B version. <laughs> Yo, slap significantly harder. Awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I, th there, there have been calls. I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm just going to put it out there. There have been calls for us to collaborate, and I know that it, it would probably be degrading your art for us to do that. But I will say that my my raps. I feel it's an untapped field for me. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's something that you know I've I've always wanted to. It's so, sort of like my feminine identity as a as a black lesbian woman. It, it's sort of like an area <laughs> that I feel is just absolutely. I, I've never touched it. I've never really gone like. I'm a classically trained violinist since the age of five. And so, you know, Mozart and Beethoven and Bach and, and Brahms are really more my, more my style. But I feel like there's a part of me that I just haven't accessed. And so, so maybe, uh, I don't know, if, if the crowd wants it, then perhaps I, I will be, I'll be forced to solicit your help in, uh, in joining the, the rap industry, is it called? I don't, I don't even know what it's called. R &B, hey, Ben, I'm, if, if there is untapped potential here, if there's a fire burning somewhere deep inside your soul that's making you want to spit some super hot bars with me, I'm down. Let's make it happen. Well, I, I really appreciate the invitation. I'm sure nothing would horrify you more, but uh, perhaps we will perhaps we will make that happen sometime in the future to the consternation of both my audience and your own. Tom McDonald, you should go check out his brand new music video, Dirty Money. It's out on YouTube right now. Tom, really appreciate the time and congratulations. Uh, 
It was a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. All righty, guys. The rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. I will be taking your phone calls. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro. Check out. Get two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us. Wow, you guys. That was such a beautiful interview between Ben Shapiro and Tom McDonald. I really enjoyed every minute that this interview lasted and i'm definitely gonna check more of ben shapiro's interview i love the way he talks i love his sense of humor i love everything about him tom madonad is such a straightforward guy and i love the way he answered every question so truthfully so straight to the point i really really enjoyed every bit of this interview if you guys totally enjoyed watching give this video a massive thumbs up Comment, share, and all that good stuff. And this is me, actually signing out. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.